Hi guys and welcome back to the show and to a little bit of a dream come true. Today we are doing the mother of all unboxings because I just received my Laguna Fusion 3 cabinet saw. As you can probably guess, moving the saw around is not a one-man job. While we watched the unboxing, I thought I'd tell you why I chose this specific cabinet saw. Well, first of all, it had to have a quick change function for the riving knife. As I have stated many times, I believe this is the single most important safety function on a table saw, as it makes it easier to change back to the blade guard and not just leave the riving knife on. Next, it of course had to fit into my shop, but it also had to be possible to dismantle the saw and get all the individual components down the narrow set of stairs and through the door into my little basement workshop. As I had to dismantle the saw to get it into the workshop, I cannot tell you how accurate the setup of the saw was out of the box. Completely by chance, a guy I was talking to online told me about uh, this Laguna. And another stroke of luck is that the Norwegian importer is located here in Bergen. I knew my breakers wouldn't handle a 3 horsepower or 220 watt motor, but I just had to try. <laughs> Luke, I am Nomad Makes. There were no user's manual with the saw, but I easily found it online. And while it wasn't perfect, it is the best user's manual I have seen as of yet. Reading it and seeing the pictures and descriptions were easy on my iPhone. With Pepper's Funk running in the background, I thought I'd give us all a reminder of where we're coming from. On the fence handle there is this really nifty little detail. There are magnets holding the handle in the upper position and I really like this little detail. So I put the saw on top of a sheet of plywood and screwed into that to fix it to the floor. I may use expansion bolts and drill down into the concrete at some later point. I haven't decided about that yet. I'll have to see how stable the, this solution is first. Okay guys, check this out. The workshop looks like crap, but 
the electrician was just here so now I have a slow 16 amp breaker on that circuit to my Laguna it's of course going to be moved but check this out check this out Ah, oh, did you hear the brake kick in? How cool is that? The spanner that comes with the saw has a really awkward shape, but all in all blade change is a breeze on the saw. And the arbor locks with this little thingamabob you push in to engage the lock. The saw has a 30mm arbor, meaning that my CMT grooving blade fits, which is really nice. The saw accepts a dado stack, but I haven't purchased one just yet. For now I will use the 6mm grooving blade. The blade that comes with the saw is just a bog standard 10 inch blade. The anti-vibration slots are just stamped in and there is very little carbide on the teeth. So getting a new general purpose blade from CMT is of high priority to me. Not having received the measuring doohickey I ordered from eBay, I checked the mitre slots against the blade, butting my woodpecker precision square against a Swanson quick square. And then I checked the fence against the mitre slots using the bottom of the Swanson speed square. The cast iron top was fairly flat. There was a slight sag towards the wings, but not more than one post-it note in thickness. Front to back, the table is as flat as we all know the earth is. The European version of this saw does for some strange reason not come with a riving knife as standard, but the importer provided one for free as they had not informed me of this. And they also sent me the key that was missing from the tilt arbor.
So we're inside the saw now. If you can see that screw there is the one that you adjust to control the tilt or to adjust the tilt. It was almost perfect from the factory, but it's like 0 0.3 degrees off. Do you know a sure sign that you've spent too long tinkering in the workshop? My mother told me someday I will buy. Anyway, back in the real world, I could mount the dust hose that goes from the dust port to the blade guard. Now, according to the manual, this saw requires a massive 934 cubic meters an hour as minimum, or 550 CFMs. So, I have since hooked the blade guard up to its own shop vac. Here you can see what difference dust extraction on the blade guard makes. And uh, before I forget, the saw comes with an outfeed table, but I will be using my workbench back to back with the table saw, meaning the workbench will act as my outfeed table. So, how about some first impressions? Looking at the blade guard, the first thing I notice is that it is extremely difficult to you know, aim. You have to lift it and get down here to aim at the, at the saw blade. For instance, on the DeWalt DWE7485, the blade guard is divided into two sections that can lift individually. And there's a hole in the middle here that you can aim through. So I'm not very impressed by the design of this blade guard. It is sufficient though. There are massive holes in between the cabinet and the cast iron tabletop. I've had to fill them 
with a combination of foam and uh, duct tape here. And I know there's a lot of work to make a new model for casting the top, but this they really should have done something about. Here you can see where the bolts fixing the the cast iron top to the cabinet um, are located and there's huge holes here as well but these are easily filled with just some some tape. Your normal job site saws have a flappy paddle that is easy to access with your knee so that you can hit the off button like an emergency switch. This here it's yeah, I think they could have done better. And finally, they're stating that the fence should never be used on the left side of the blade. And I think that's just a lot of hogwash. And this bar here is a lot better than what they say, is that the left side of the bar here, its only job is to hold the switch. But I think that's an old statement. And this side of the bar has been redesigned since at least some other saws that I've looked at that where this seems more flimsy. But on this saw, I have no qualms using the, the fence on the left side, which is more safe since I am a southpaw or a left-handed user. Now with the obvious cons out of the way, I'd like to tell you that I'm thoroughly impressed by this saw. And especially the couple of functions that really makes this saw stand out and which is the reason why I purchased it, you know, apart from the fact that it actually it's possible to get into the workshop. And those two functions are the quick change driving knife and the fact that the blade stops so quickly. Now, the, it's interesting because I was talking to another guy who had the same saw in Laguna. I told him that there is no quick stop function on this saw. But I think there is. At least, the saw blade stops quite quickly. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. This is, a, like I said, a little bit of a dream come true to me, to have a, an actual cabinet saw in the shop. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to support me, you'll find Amazon affiliate links and a Patreon link down below. If you don't want that, you can also help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. My mother told me. So, guys, I'm afraid to say nothing about how the saga was set up from the ground. We have it. Let's move on.